So uh, thank you all for coming and uh, joining us uh, on this uh, uh, session uh, on webinar with uh, Dina Karadžić. Uh, my name is Irena Boric and I would like to welcome you on uh, behalf of Hibla. Uh, so uh, first uh, to mention that uh, the idea behind this uh, reading circle is uh, not uh, to know everything about uh, Dina Karadžić's uh, art practice or about uh, the text uh, by Hita Steyer, but rather uh, to maybe learn something new or to uh, have a new perspective of something uh, that you already maybe know. Uh, so it is really great uh, pleasure to have uh, Dina Karadžić uh, here with us, uh, especially as we had uh, many uh, different occasions to uh, collaborate and uh, work together. Uh, so the idea for uh, this uh, circle today is actually coming from the state of uh, uh, digital uh, being and living uh, today and uh, the way uh, things are changing and affecting us. Uh, this text was actually written in 2013, so the author who wrote it uh, is quite known uh, theoretician uh, and artist, dealing a lot uh, and writing a lot uh, about uh, very various aspects uh, of digital image as well as uh, internet in general. Uh, while on the other hand, we have uh, Dina Karadžić, who is uh, an artist uh, coming from Croatia, uh, working a lot uh, within digital sphere, be it uh, online or offline, and uh, also leading uh, one of the quite important uh, organizations uh, in that field. Uh, field uh, format C, uh, who uh, supports uh, and creates a different kind of uh, digital com communities uh, within local, but also within uh, international uh, context. Uh, Dina is also often working uh, collaboratively, collaboratively uh, especially with uh, Vedran Gligo, who is also here. So Vedran, please, uh, if you feel like joining us in any kind of moment, uh, you're welcome to. So before I give my words to Dina, I would just like uh, that each of us, uh, I mean, I would like to invite you to briefly introduce. I'm just uh, inviting everybody to uh, briefly introduce. So you don't have to state your whole biography or anything like that but just simply as stating your name, uh, your pronoun, and uh, do you think is, in, is internet dead? So I can start. My name is Irena Boric. <clears throat> Wait a second, some participants are joining us. So hello, Jure. <laughs> and so the idea is now to uh, briefly introduce uh, the group that is present with us on the Zoom because we are the reading group and if you are um, if you wish to speak, you are very much welcome to. But I would just like to ask you to uh, introduce yourself by your name, pronoun, and is uh, internet dead. So my name is Irena Boric, and my pronoun is she, her, and uh, I think internet is not dead. So uh, does anybody else wants to introduce themselves? Hi, uh, I'm Jure. My pronouns are he him and uh, i think the internet is the living dead okay i'm gregor um well i go by he him but also any other thing i'm ready to experiment um i don't identify under these circumstances so anyway uh what else i'm researcher of playfulness and um well the question is, if internet was ever alive, let's question, for example, let's start with that. Thank you. Somebody else? Okay, uh, Irena already introduced me. Uh, I'm Vedran. I work with Dina and I think the internet is slowly dying. Okay. 
Uh, Dario, maybe you want to introduce yourself or not? Uh, I believe Dario introduced himself via text. Dario uh, is joining us today. Uh, his pronouns are he, him, and he thinks the internet is pretty much alive and well. Okay. Uh, what about you, Vina? Do you want to uh, introduce yourself? Just say your name, your pronoun, and do you think internet is dead? Uh, hi, uh, I thought I'll be just like observer of this series, and I don't think it's dead yet, but I think it's dying. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you are very much free to join in or not. You can only listen or you can also talk, depends how you look. Feel. So this is, but this is just an opening. So everybody introduces themselves. And now I'm actually giving my word to Dina and she will shortly uh, present her practice. And then we will open the text and uh, the discussion will follow. So, so Dina, please, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Irena. And thanks to everybody for joining today. I'm really looking forward to our session and I'm going to try to keep my part short so we can all contribute and make it a collaborative uh, effort. Uh, so my name is Dina. Nice to meet you all. And uh, my pronouns, uh, because uh, our Croatian language uh, forces us to use them, are, are uh, she, her. And I believe the internet uh, is changing, <laughs> constantly changing, and hopefully not that uh, yet in this most simple way. Um, so I'm going to start uh, with showing you uh, one of the projects that uh, uh, both Vedran and I base our practice uh, in regards to networked arts. Um, we have a lot of projects, but this one uh, seemed to be most communicative about uh, this topic that we share today. So what I'm going to share you is a presentation uh, from online. It can be found on our website. So, so uh, one of our projects, uh, when I say our, I uh, primarily, I mean veterans and mine, and also uh, a project by our artist organization as an initiative of individuals. It's sometimes it's two people, sometimes it's more. It really depends on the projects and on the occasion. But what we try to do is to create uh, projects that are that go beyond visual uh, art and multimedia art and into hypermedia, into coding, into something that might be perceived as utilitarian, uh, but it's basically we try to work on projects that have infrastructure uh, characteristics in them somehow. We often try to deconstruct, is it images, is it networks, is it uh, media in general, is it sculpture, uh, is it events, we try to deconstruct uh, these uh, like everything that we've known and what we learned. Uh, so uh, our project that is most related to networks and the internet is Pavilion, which basically is a personal darkness pocket gallery operating system project. It's really complicated and I will really try to explain it, but if there's anything that's not really clear, feel free to contact us. And if you're curious about the project, this is why we do it, like contact us, join in. Uh, so we, at one point of our collaboration, um, I asked Vedran, like, why do I have to go through a server and a website to show work from within a gallery space to the people who come and join the event in a gallery space. I have to choose a domain, I have to pay this domain, I have to select a server, or I have to pay a service, and everything is kind of going 
around making a full circle from, for example, from Croatia to the US or wherever and back. And I said, this doesn't really make sense for me. And I also don't have money to sustain, to sustain this. Uh, I believe uh, creating new media art at some point was really, uh, really somehow overflown by ideas that are more of those of the uh, creative sector or a corporate sector. And they were not really scaled and optimized to an individual's needs and possibilities. Uh, and we also believe like creating new media art should not be a privilege, but a basic right of any artist in any economy and in any state. Uh, so we thought about how to present this and because Vedran is a technological wizard uh, who really is really skillful with uh, with open source, uh, with GNU Linux, and with, with any code, basically any project. Uh, he thought to make a Raspberry Pi into a so small server, but the way it could piggyback on the on any internet was to use the Tor protocol to show work. That basically meant we created an idea and this is not a really super unique idea. There's a lot of projects, especially in the open source community, which deal with these kinds of uh, aspects, but they were, we didn't find any that was really point on uh, of everything that we actually needed uh, to make it work in an arts context. So what basically Vedran created for us was a darknet uh, gallery that you could hop on and piggyback onto any physical internet infrastructure and use it to show your work on the darknet. Uh, so yeah, this is the reason why we use Tor uh, and not because it's cool, but of course, I don't mind that it's kind of provocative and it also opens up a lot of questions on um, on notions of uh, legality and of responsibility from the point of an artist. And I would love to mention, and I'm sorry, I don't want to shame anybody. Of course, any question is legitimate, but we get a lot of questions like, isn't Tor illegal? And mostly what I answer to people is that it's not the infrastructure that's illegal. It's if you do, if you use it for illegal stuff, then it's illegal. But of course, as everybody knows, uh, for example, Tor and any any object or structure or system can be used uh, for good and for bad. And also if something is illegal, it doesn't really mean that it's not acceptable in a way in the context of, for example, citizen disobedience, uh, whistleblowing and any positive humanist approach towards information in our age. So uh, how did we do it? Uh, we planned the project to run on a Raspberry Pi hardware. We chose this uh, hardware because it was really accessible somehow, both to us and not in all countries. Of course, I'm really generalizing when I say something technology is accessible, but we, we perceive this one hardware device uh, as a multi, you know, multi potential tool which you could use to have your server on it. You could have it, uh, you could have 15 pages, 15 art projects on it and still run it and still use it for something else uh, in your home. So it wasn't a resource that you would uh, buy, throw away or that would take away your life savings over time. Uh, so as you can see the list of um, items you need to run, you can also kind of upcycle from an old camera or um, like use the internet that you have. So I already mentioned like why were we curious to create this 
project, but there's also an ideological aspect um, where we literally were physically able to put our art, digital, visual, multimedia art, you are able to put it on Tumblr, on Facebook, on wherever you want, on any service on the internet, uh, if it isn't blocked by your nation's uh, policies. But what we've seen uh, is that it, it's not just what you create, it's, it's also like what you create with what you create. And we didn't really feel I mean, I didn't really feel okay with sharing uh, all of my art on a private product, which most of the internet nowadays is. So if any social media network is to change its terms of service, I would lose everything. And in the process, I would cre be creating addicts from my friends and myself to be just to be able to enjoy work. So it was either this super corporate uh, mimicked um, like thing that's masked into a social circle and a public open platform, which it in, in its underlying structure, it really isn't. Or it was me paying for a service, which is of course, totally acceptable but not in the long run this is not something that's sustainable for artists so uh, i don't know if you remember like tumblr had a purge recently and because it's private property it changed uh, it changed uh, authors uh, owners sorry and at one point it's porn policy where you you could use it for this and of course there's no like simple explanation um like I, i'm not really clear with myself on my stance on porn on tumblr but of course this was a catalyst this was a community effort and a catalyst also for body positivity for queer communities who, who were able to use this network as their digital home and a place of meeting. And at one point with one sales, uh, with one corporate takeover, it just fell apart and most of the Tumblr was deleted. And also there's a question of algorithmic uh, censorship where a lot of art that's not porn was categorized as such and was removed from the platform. Uh, this resulted in this resulted in like, portfolios which were shared because Tumblr was a perceived as a community space. So these portfolios are now kind of empty. They're like half representative, and I like to think about the internet that it travels both in in time in towards the future and the past. So if you shared your link anytime in the past, now like the Tumblr new policies change your past and will change your future. Uh, so we really wanted to create this workflow where um, people would maybe have a harder time to create their galleries to show their work. They would have a bit of a harder time to distribute them because the Tor network is quite slow. Um, public's notions about it are really different and are really kind of poisoned by the rhetoric of a space of an autonomy being exclusively used for wrong. Um, so we we really kind of formed this project with a language which was more of an open source community language than than one of an artist. So I would say nothing that we cre we created for the project itself, uh, apart from some visuals or representations, uh, was literally visual art. I don't know if infrastructure art is is the right term, but yeah, I would call it that. So 
uh, I will not show all the references. As, as you can see, my URL bar, like the address portion of uh, the website, uh, you can also access this presentation and you can really research. There's a lot, like some of these references we use for workshops. Uh, um, also an important aspect of Pavilion is to share the knowledge that we kind of manage to structure and to articulate for ourselves and for the community. And also the code of the project is on GitLab, so anybody can install it even without us knowing it. Um, and I believe this part of kind of resharing something that we compiled into one usable, uh, contextually um, kind of adapt uh, uh, project is really important because this code, we, we found portions of code, we are using projects that are sourced by and created by the community. And it's really important to give these uh, also back. So there's a lot of stuff here that we use in a bit of a harder way, but once you go through them, you can under, maybe you can understand the web and multimedia and hypermedia in a bit better. Uh, so we had a few events, uh, a few events, like a few years of worth of events, and we are still expanding and experimenting and changing approach. Sometimes we will decide to hide this uh, hardware part. Sometimes we will show the hardware part. Uh, sometimes the hardware is just a catalyst for our communities to come together. When I say communities, I think about artists and authors who want to create something for this platform, for the pavilion, for their pavilion gallery, which they decide, do they allow us to show it, do they show it? and for our communities which gather around every instance as kind of viewers and have some reflection on the on the work. So the first one, uh, the first event, the first pavilion was actually formed at the net.cube open studio residency in 2015. And this was, uh, if I'm not mistaken, my first collaboration with our, with our uh, moderator, uh, Irena, and uh, the author of this program. Uh, so it was a really um, kind of it was a really constructive experience where we tried to represent uh, hypermedia work in a gallery setting and we used the Raspberry Pi to do this and it was a groundbreaking event for myself. <laughs> so I'm, for this I'm super grateful. Uh, afterwards, uh, Vedran and I, who is the author of the code, um, I'm always bossing around everything else. Um, we applied for Schloss Post, the uh, Academy Schloss Solitude uh, from Stuttgart uh, for a web residency for the first one. And we, everybody was crazy enough to uh, award us with this, uh, with this residency. And for this also, I'm very grateful because uh, it allowed us to kind of articulate this project, which was a weird hybrid of open source software, uh, really affordable hardware and no visual artist context, almost no whatsoever. So the next uh, session that we had during the web residency was a test, uh, like a case study uh, concept test of a gallery, uh, which is really fully nomadic. So we took a Raspberry Pi and a, a, a transportable battery case and we plugged it in and we've shown this work that you can see, this is one of the GIFs that were shown in the gallery. Um, we shown it in a bus, which was driving from Osijek to Zagreb. And it was on the dark net because we connected it to, um, to the bus Wi-Fi. So the bus was hosting it on Tor, uh, basically. 
Uh, okay. So then we use the system uh, as our own server for a few events. Uh, uh, this, what you see on the screen was uh, uh, when we took uh, part in a lovely exhibition. The artist is online. You can find some info about it also on the Academische Solitudes website. And we had a live performance of reinterpreting uh, visuals from uh, uh, the project Data Club Online. And it was just somehow it was a test to see if this small device can handle if it can handle uh, multiple connections and every time it's kind of like a, a <laughs> something between a struggle and practice and an experiment uh, to get this stuff to work. I mean, it's mostly Vedran that makes them work. I mostly break them. Uh, so afterwards, we shown the results uh, of this uh, collaborative reinterpretation process where everybody would upload, download, or uh, remix their own their images uh, amongst ourselves. We were all doing it, so anybody could join. It was kind of an open platform to reinterpret images from a collection that was digitized for this specific purpose to be uh, reinterpreted. Mm. So the ne next uh, occasion was uh, when we took part uh, in the uh, Slavonian Biennale in the city of Osijek. Uh, that uh, session was called uh, Borders of Visibility, that Biennale was called that. And we basically uh, got, were gifted by the curator's trust uh, for us to set up an open repository Raspberry on the darknet from inside of the gallery. So that meant the Raspberry Pi was connected to the gallery's network and was uh, accepting uh, submissions that could be done through the darknet uh, to become part of the exhibition in the gallery space. Uh, so, yeah, and that then we started to experiment with sharing our curatorship somehow. Uh, and uh, we work with the uh, Shesten Sisters uh, and the Net.Q Collective again and created this lovely distributed. And this is a really important work distributed. It was not centralized or decentralized, like everybody had their own autonomy and we could have split the devices and still create one concept out of it. Uh, what I mentioned, we can also create uh, workshops with this. Uh, so these are just the devices. We also got the project was nominated for the hash awards uh, as because it was part of the web residencies. And I really believe these kinds of events. And even though our project is independent, it's uh, artist run, uh, it's really not somehow we are not so tied to the institutions, but still when an institution kind of affirms your idea and your quest for decentralizing the infrastructure of future art, not just our art, but everybody's art, this is really nice to feel. And I really hope everybody would go uh, in that direction a bit more. So. Oh, this is the workshop. Oh, I love this image. So this is maybe our biggest audience for an artist talk about Pavilion. And it was a really, really lovely uh, discussion that we created around uh, these uh, servers that we set up in a gallery space. And we actually installed these wires. So all the wires that you see are hanging from the ceiling. These are like physical, actual uh, power and ethernet cables, which we decided to kind of put there in everybody's face just to see, okay, this is a network and this is how it looks like. This is how everything is connected because we are always trying to find some ways to communicate this work. 
okay, we have some concepts with like uh, removing ourselves from uh, like uh, the casings that are uh, manufactured uh, commercially, and we're gonna put them in sculptures. And uh, we also had uh, uh, an opportunity and it was really great to be part of uh, a project uh, of, by the Siva Zona organization in Kochla where we installed pavilions and now you understand these are like just Raspberry Pi servers as Wi-Fi hotspots in the in the public space. So in the I'm sorry to mention the COVID the pandemic, but in this manner, like, this was really a really a nice way to communicate artwork because you would have a chance to show people your art in their devices in an open space. So now we have an exhibition which is set up uh, in uh, the Buxa Club, it's also a Wi-Fi gallery, which you can see from the outside park. Um, so these are all the people that were part, the artists that were part of the exhibitions. And I hope we extend this table, uh, this list uh, soon, and probably somebody is not mentioned, but we'll try to fix it. And yeah, so with this, I will, um, finish uh, my presentation. There's also a lot of stuff that I didn't share, but I'm going to stop here. I think I'm already past uh, my time. So thank you for listening. Thank you, Dina, very much for uh, this presentation. Now I wonder if somebody has immediate questions uh, for Dina. Uh, regarding the work, uh, because if yes, maybe to ask them now and then to open up the text. If not, okay, then I will just uh, briefly introduce uh, the text. Uh, I don't know, have you managed to read it? Uh, and even if not, uh, you're very much welcome to share your thoughts on some concept that uh, we would like to tackle uh, throughout this session. Uh, so uh, Hito Stavl is one of the quite influential uh, artists and theoreticians for the last uh, decade, basically. And interestingly enough, the text was, as I already said, uh, written in, back in 2013. Uh, when this idea about uh, web that is actually very much surveilled and very much cooperative uh, was becoming more and more attention. Uh, I mean, it got more and more attention. And uh, now uh, I would also like to invite you to rethink this text within the context uh, of today and how, how do we use uh, internet today in a sense of uh, being completely distant from uh, a lot of people and having a lot of, uh, uh, I don't know, aspects of our life uh, based uh, on screen. So I think uh, the provocation uh, starting uh, with the title uh, is, is the internet dead. Uh, it's, it's something that it already brings uh, attention to, to see uh, how can something be dead when it's so present? And what I would immediately like to quote from there is this moment uh, that never before have more people been dependent on, embedded into, surveilled by, and exploited by the web. So this kind of moment, which I think we can uh, very easily uh, relate to this kind of condition uh, today. So uh, I wonder, uh, Especially like, uh, for example, to bring this, this moment of what is internet today and like when it's pushed even more uh, into that sphere of, of, of uh, surveillance, but also into this on, uh, constant uh, presence. Uh, I wonder uh, what are your thoughts uh, about being the, like, the situation that is happening now and uh, the way you would like to use it. 
or you would like to create it or you would like to think it differently how can you think it even like for the beginning maybe can we think about creating it differently but maybe just to think it differently and then to, to come to the something uh, constructive I want to allow uh, other people to have reflections. So if anybody else uh, wants to drop in, just uh, stop me. But of course, I have a lot of uh, ideas uh, on, on this uh, subject. And um, I just wanted to mention that the whole thing, like the internet and computers and everything was quite new to me quite recently. And I kind of uh, missed the part uh, of the World Wide Web, you know, in its beginnings. But what I see and what I was provided, provided with recently was this highly commercialized space where it was kind of impossible to create own rules. So I would really, I'm, and I'm trying uh, in, in everything I try to think about, I'm trying to split uh, the web and the internet. And I'm trying to use as little of the World Wide Web as I could while still using the infrastructure of the internet, which is the physical infrastructure that's kind of allowing us to connect uh, to each other and then we lose this design this user interface design that is kind of branded and created for for us to become users of something and we have to think about how we want to interact with others and what options and what which buttons and what is the language that we use and what's the hierarchy in deciding like how to uh, how to connect uh, to others by using the physical internet. And there's quite a few of these projects that are based on co connecting uh, communities inside of them and to, to other communities um, Yeah, without actually accessing uh, the, the thing that we consider the internet, but it's actually the web and its products, which are branded as social spaces. Somebody else wants to, of course, you are very much welcome to join. Uh, so basically, what I think it's in her focus, and also it's what is very much present from what she writes about, is always this moment, what is happening with an image and what is happening with the representation. So in that sense, she's like, uh, I also read this uh, moment with uh, and a comparison with post cinema uh, that is also like some kind of reflection or kind of uh, uh, reference to this uh, term of post internet, uh, the, in the term that was actually coined to, to address uh, art that is uh, not necessarily that is done when the internet is uh, uh, finished, but rather uh, it, uh, it is inspired by uh, internet in a sense of uh, something that uh, can, I don't know, go very, be very material within the gallery, but uh, its, uh, its origin kind of belongs to the digital world. So in that sense, I found it interesting how she uh, connects this moment of uh, cinema and uh, the death of cinema, which kind of she puts it in the middle of the Bosnian war uh, when, when Yaitse was destroyed uh, around 1993. And I found that quite interesting, especially in a sense that for her, this very concrete uh, politically charged uh, events are uh, very much in connection with what's happening with the images and what's happening uh, with the representation itself. Uh, so in a sense, uh, I would be curious also to hear uh, how, how did you read uh, this uh, aspect and, and this moment uh, was happening with the internet that the internet is not over, but it is all over. So in a sense, uh, how it spreads uh, all around the place and uh, how is it everywhere? I have uh, something. Please. Yeah. Um, 
It's interesting, yes, this term post-internet because it was thrown around for a while and now it's kind of lost, uh, you know, we don't hear of it so much. And I was always kind of troubled, not troubled, but kind of intrigued by the, the term post-internet because you also have net art, which is kind of art that is attached to the internet. Whereas post-internet, I always considered as being uh, art that is responding or has in itself some sort of condition that is uh, conditioned by the existence of, of internet. And maybe at the time, maybe in like mid, you know, early 2000s or uh, in the early teens, maybe internet wasn't so prevalent to that extent. So maybe there could you could point to some art that was you know, kind of clearly a response to, to, to the existence of internet and of networks existing uh, in, on the internet. But, and this was kind of very particular. I don't think today when so many artists show their work on platforms, you know, their, their conditions of making artists uh, directly connected to the internet, even if the, the work itself is not uh, in that sense, you know, like talking about the internet. So yes, it's very interesting, this term. And I don't know, maybe I think there is a shift recently where we kind of have um, uh, kind of stopped using this term. Thank you. <laughs> Dina, do you want to comment? Um. Yeah, of course, always. Uh, I also uh, noticed that the post-internet syntax is not uh, it's not really used uh, anymore anymore in such an intensity when it was uh, basically maybe a pro basically it was maybe a provocation somehow like to kind of. Uh, to, just to shake the structures of uh, modern art history uh, just a bit. And uh, I feel um, because of a lo lot of Stahl's uh, work is based uh, about this, uh, it's based around uh, like the circulation of images, like at least a lot that I follow. Um, I feel it's, it somehow it somehow perceived uh, by the by the art institutions. Uh, and this is maybe a bit uh, a bit uh, harsh to say, but I feel sometimes the institutions in art would perceive that a medium uh, dies with its uh, with the moment of its adoption into the masses, like into the normal human being who is not an artist and does not perceive himself as an artist. So uh, what's mentioned about the cinema, I'm really not knowledgeable about the, unfortunately, about the political, the, the specific geographically political context uh, of Yaitse, but I also understand that she talks about uh, um, moments in human history where where a medium has become uh, accessible and de democratized in a way it was it was it became able to be used by a lot of people and I hear a lot about this uh, for example in in glitch art which is also I think it's pronounced uh, almost dead, if not dead, the kind of the discipline, the genre. Um, but I also see it somehow like the the broader kind of audience, not only the artists adopting a medium, which is maybe the internet and the data in this manner um, is maybe a really important step towards evolving uh, our uh, communication and culture in general. But what I also feel is important is these uh, specific constrictions that you could have while trying to build this community, which is able 
to use a new tool and a new medium. And I feel sometimes, uh, as I mentioned, the art world and, for example, the free, liberal, open source movement are not really compatible in this manner. And there's also a reflection towards this, uh, towards the end of the text. Maybe I, I wouldn't rush uh, now, but I would love to re return to this. Uh, point. So I think it's really important if we kill the internet, it's really important, like the way we do it <laughs> somehow. I don't uh, see the problem if you come to the end of the text. Uh, because I found that it's also quite interesting in a sense of uh, the what she is mentioning. So this moment, if one can share a restaurant dish JPEG on Facebook, why not the real meal? Why not apply fair use to space parks and swimming pools? Why only claim open access to J JSTOR and not MIT? Or any school, or, uh, hospital or university for that matter? Why shouldn't data clouds dish, uh, charge as storming supermarkets? Uh, why not open source water, energy, and Don Perignon champagne? So, for example, I think this moment is uh, again, as she's, I mean, as you already mentioned, that this moment of uh, circulation of images and how they are going around and so on. And then also, of course, it's uh, her famous uh, text about the poor image, the image that is, has this low quality and so on. And uh, there are, of course, so many other uh, concepts that are present, but what I like uh, about this text is actually that she ended it uh, with this, that it kind of addresses this uh, aspect that is what is actually problematic with it. If the problematic, uh, it can also be read because it's only about the representation and then there is not uh, the real context. It's again uh, the way the, the internet is used. As you are mentioning, for example, to use the infrastructure, but uh, I see the way she's talking about it is she talks about it to use it more for this moment of visual representation. Uh, and uh, in, through that, I think this is the most present aspect that she's actually uh, discussing about. Uh, yeah. I don't know if anybody wants to pop in. Okay. No, you're very uh, much welcome to. <laughs> okay. Yeah, just stop me. I'm, I'm okay with stopping anytime. Um, so uh, I, I really see it uh, like every creation and everything that we created in the modern or contemporary world I see it's kind of like it's a tension between uh, three aspects and that might be the institutional um, and uh, the private sector and the people or the representatives of people's needs, the third sector. Um, so as I mentioned, there's this aspect, this institutionalized aspect of art, which is of course important for some, uh, some parts of the discipline itself. But there's also a lot of uh, non-institutional and uh, aspects that come from the people. And this is why I really, uh, I really care about the uh, the poor image text uh, in defense of the poor image uh, by Hito because uh, there there's this uh, perception of art as being unique and then there's internet which allows distribution copying and like numerous multiplications of one and the single image of a work and it's basically not an idea that's materialist uh, and that's uh, in line with the concept, for example, of copyright, which is in line uh, with the concept of private ownership and not shared ownership and public commons and everything that 
uh, like the opposite camp of openness and uh, uh, and of free code on the internet, for example, is caring about. I also see there's um, there's a lot of Marxist potential to discuss here about, but um, I won't go down that road because we only have a few more minutes. Uh, but I feel it's really important. And I love that the text uh, finishes on this open high note of optimism, that the way that we work on the internet nowadays could potentially pave the way uh, for different and new and more humane uh, societal systems, because this is really what we need. And there's currently, and I like to think of every year in our life right now as one of the most formative ones, each is the most formative one for our online life, which also reflects on how we behave in real life. And this is what Hito also mentions as form and function. Like the internet provides us a model and the information channel, it gives us the form, but it really, it's what it does is to create real life somehow. And this is the function. And if we get this wrong, I know I, I sound like a paranoid, uh, a paranoid uh, artist, which is really, I'm really not, which is, I think the proof of this is that we're having this discussion on Zoom and Facebook, which is totally okay to distribute uh, events uh, and information, but uh, I really believe that the way how we build our communities around this thing that we call the internet is really important. Thank you, Dina. If somebody else wants to say something. Uh, it's very difficult uh, because we are all on Zoom, otherwise we would be live uh, in a circle and it would be much easier to read uh, people's faces and uh, ideas if somebody would like to share something or not. So I'm sorry, I have to ask all the time. Uh, I think it's, uh, yeah, and I think uh, it is really interesting uh, what you just said that also uh, it is about creating new reality that uh, in order to understand that you actually need to have certain technical skills which I found is interesting because like uh, you cannot understand it if you, if you don't know what it, like what is uh, what is like basically some kind of uh, structure uh, behind it. Uh, May I say something or one also, comment? Please. Uh, you were discussing a lot about internet uh, approaches, culture, and I would just like to make one observation because I'm thinking a lot about uh, how is this appearance on internet now. And I would like to comment Dina Karadzic has a great uh, appearance uh, because obviously she's uh, uh, able to to intervene, to add something visual to her appearance. And it's totally like a personal TV, internet <laughs> um, appearance. So yeah, this is just a, just a, like a visual observation of what is going on nowadays because uh, so far, yeah, I'm thinking a lot about uh, how, to, how to appear. And I think that artists and cultural workers are now uh, challenged by uh, their own appearance on, for example, Zoom on uh, communication channels. Thank you. Thank you, Alexandra. Do you want to comment, Dina? So just thanks for the comment. And uh, I feel there's more ways to represent yourselves, uh, ourselves, 
and I, I try to do it in a way that's fun for me and try to learn from every occasion. But I'm also privileged to be able to do it, to have friends who have the technical uh, know-how to kind of help me to create something that I imagined. Um, and I feel it's also important that we create these safe circles and safe spaces for ourselves, amongst, uh, amongst ourselves. Um, and this is where like collaborative creation and experiment would come in and we really try to create this atmosphere of openness and of an artist experiment where we can collaborate with more people and maybe we don't create anything in the end but we will create a lot of experience for each other and a bit of knowledge and a bit of more understanding of the structures that we want to work on or need to work on yeah, and uh, specifically uh, with uh, for example zoom uh, it created it kind of provided something for the community in these times of crisis so I think it's it's somehow it's okay to participate um, as long as you don't depend on it I think that's the that's the potential downside if you don't understand that there are more alternatives outside of Zoom. So if this is like one of the options for an artist, that's great. I feel that's great. But if it's the only option, then yeah, <laughs> I think we can together, we can create a lot more than we could individually. Okay, thank you. Uh, if somebody else uh, has a comment or uh, something to share. I mean, I can just uh, chime in uh, in the end. I mean, I, I would just like to comment that this is not uh, something that's restricted only to art or, or, or artists. Like this is a battle that everybody has to fight for themselves. I mean, that's kind of what Hito is also saying, not really, but kind of. Uh, so, I mean, it's not just artists who, who, who have this set of problems of their identities being represented in these Okay, now it's literally a little square, but we can also uh, think about it in uh, in a more metaphorical way, uh, uh, way where uh, these uh, big big powers that be, let's not call them corporations, but let's just call them these very powerful entities, dictate the way we buy stuff, we, um, I mean, we sell stuff, we talk to our friends, we talk to everybody else. So, I mean, this is a problem that everybody has to be aware of. Uh, artists uh, maybe have in this specific time have this opportunity to 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 make this problem come out a bit more than everybody else and yeah so that's just that's just something i would like to add here this is not something that only artists have to uh, have to worry about or think about in their uh, work because i mean your everyday person now can make can make these small decisions about not taking the easy way out, you know, and that's what it's all about. It's this, I mean, this struggle, or if you want to call it that. Uh, I mean, it's it's not about making these grand decisions and gestures and I don't know what. It's about like making these little choices which might be harder. It's like choosing not to eat meat. Uh, that's like, it's not hard not to eat meat. You can just choose not to eat it. Or you can also choose to eat meat, which is fine. Uh, I mean, you can also choose to use exclusively Facebook or exclusively um, these uh, these corporate tools, which do the job. You know, you can't really say that they don't do the job; they work. But or you can take uh, the hard way of doing it and actually learn something about the tools that uh, that you're using in your everyday life, right? So yeah, that's something I would like to add. <laughs> Thank you, Vedran. If uh, there is somebody else that wants to say something. So, if not, ah, sorry, nobody hear me, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, if there is somebody else, uh, they want to say something. 
maybe I would just thank everybody for their contributions and uh, yeah, it was nice to meet you and in this virtual space and I really hope um, yeah, we get to create all of us. We create something that we can, we learn something. And uh, if we can help, let us know, like our contacts are all over the internet and everywhere. <laughs> and uh, that's about it. I had a nice time and bye. <laughs> okay, thank you, Dina, very much. I think we, we kind of, we, we just put a little, uh, just a few points uh, from the text. I think we haven't touched so much, but still we have some time that is uh, here and I think it's okay to use it uh, wisely. So thank you very much uh, everybody for coming. Thank you very much Dina for being with us and for presenting and discussing. And uh, thank you Vedran as well and everybody else. So uh, have a good night. Bye.